Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, quite simply the best all-round fishing show on YouTube. I managed to resurrect here some old vintage footage when I used to do a lot of marlin fishing and unfortunately I did a lot of marlin fishing many years ago, but I've got some resurrected stuff I think it's worth looking at, managed to save you a bit of action as well and there's an introduction from a very good looking young guy on how to catch striped marlin using live baits. I'll tell you what, some tips in there. You only want one good tip and you catch a fish out of it and it's got to be worth watching. And I think this one's worth watching. Well, I'm on it. And I'm a lot younger. <coughs> okay, we're here in uh, Cabo San Lucas. We're in the Mardi Cortez Hotel. Before we go out, I'd like to show you some of the gear we're going to use for these striped marlin, which are about the most acrobatic marlin species you can get. We'll probably be pulling some lures. These are uh, seven strands, American seven strand uh, clone lures. They're not too big, they're not what you call a, a very big marlin lure, but then again the striped marlin are smaller anyway. And we've got a double hook, small uh, 8 and 9 7731 Sea Demon hooks in tandem, very, very sharp. So we'll be pulling those lures. The other ones we'll be pulling, which are probably a bit big, are the Murray Brothers Light and Glow ones. This is a number three head pusher lure. Uh, a little bit big for striped marlin, but if we fish it close in the wake, there's a good chance the fish will come up on that and allow us, if he doesn't hook up on this, we maybe get a bait back to it. And then there's another one which I've had uh, a lot of success with before in Mauritius as well and that's called a seven strand pro series it's got a flat nose and it's uh, a pink i've got no idea what it'll come out like on the video but it's pink again all double hook rigs the marlin leader here is uh, specifically for blue marlin you don't need a heavy leader for striped marlin but they have had some blues here um, recently to about 300 pounds but in past years they've had them to well over 900 pounds that's 400 pound mono so that's the three lures but the principal uh, method we're going to be using is live baiting. Now fishing what we do uh, is to make a special loop knot here on an eagle claw hook or a mustad hook, very short shank, a wide gape, it's a live bait hook specifically for live baiting and we, I call this a loop knot, I make this loop knot and then I melt the end with, uh, with a matchstick so it just swings loose like this. This allows a live bait to swim around freely, doesn't tangle up, gives it a lot of action. The locals here use a 100 pound uh, Andy monofilament leader, very, very light for these marlin. Uh, I use 125, so I've made up some of these um, for our group and for myself so we can get straight to work. Just a, one point here these are very difficult because the point is curved in, they're very difficult to hone a very, very sharp point on. So take your time and work at it from different angles until you can actually feel it prick a little piece of skin. That one has been sharp and it's much much sharp you know you, you need to for these fish you need to have a very very sharp hook so that's what we're going to use basically uh, a few swivels you're only going to need one swivel this is a sampo 4cz 100 pound test ball bearing swivel and we'll be using one a slightly larger one as well perhaps for lure fishing which is a sampo 5cz that's a 165 pound test ball bearing swivel all you do is you thread and line up the rings, you tie on your double line, put in a bimini twist and then either with an improved clinch knot or with a, an offshore trolling knot you put your snap swivel on and you can easily snap on either a lure or your live bait rig like that and just snap, snap it straight on and you're free to cast out. The other things you want is a file, a pair of hip pliers and cutters so you can cut fish free if you're going to release them file for taking the worst off of the hook, you know, cut away the worst of the hook and then a stone for putting a very fine point on it. So three items which you can sometimes get holsters for and you can put them in out the way and you've always got them. Okay, as for tackle, we're going to be using stand-up tackle, we're not going to be using fighting chairs and great big harnesses. We'll be using rods like this one which is a, a five foot six cow style stand-up stick. As you can see, this is already rigged up, hook sharpened all ready to go. We're using Shimano TLD uh, 20 and 25s loaded with 30 pound test Andy premium line. So we're going light tackle for marlin, not heavy gear. All the fish will be caught standing up and probably with a bit of luck every fish we cast to 
will be uh, over the hundred pound mark. They're a good average size here, so on a thirty pound test, you get some good sport. Now to set the drags on those, always take a little spring balance like this. Get a couple of you in the room, and on the strike setting with a strike drag, you want about twenty five percent of the line. So if it's thirty pound line, seven or eight pound strike drag is ample. You can always go past the strike setting not to put a little bit more pressure on, but I don't advise that. But the main point is with uh, trolling and, and casting at close range like we're going to be doing, uh, you want to make sure that the strike setting allows line to come off. So this spring balance, you can, you can set your drag on the reel perfectly, and you know when you first hook that fish that he's not going to break the line. Uh, one other thing we're going to be doing is to uh, knock the rod over. No, is to uh, tag and release a fish. I'm out with uh, Pete Clough, who's just having two of us to the boat and we're going to be tagging these fish. This is the NMFS shark tag, which I'm not supposed to be using for billfish, but we're going to be tagging these. So if you see this in use on the video, it's a stainless steel uh, blade on the end. It slots into this needle. I've made the tag stick up myself. I just put an elastic band over the cylinder. Inside that uh, plastic capsule there is a little roll of information so that should it be caught by a long liner or another angler and the fish is retained, you can learn from uh, research data kept by the NMFS how big the fish is going to grow, uh, where it's migrated to and from, uh, lots of different information that as fishermen you need to know. So you might see this in action, we're going to try and tag and release some on the video for you as well. A few other items of uh, tackle. The stand up fishing when it gets slippery you need a pair of gloves. Um, these quite simply are just yachting gloves but they're leather palmed and they're fingerless. They're handy for getting hold of leaders. If you're going to lead the fish and do a solitaire, you want to grab hold of the bill. A marlin's bill is very rough. So you've got these leather gloves, they're, they're leather palmed. Uh, you can get some with a vented back, which is much better. These just happen to be the only pair I've got at the moment. They've got a Velcro tab, but being fingerless you can tie knots. You can still tie fishing knots. That allows you to fight a fish hard with stand up uh, rods. You don't let the full grip slip out your hand so easily. It's much better. The real handle won't slip either. So. Get yourself a pair of uh, fingerless fighting gloves. The other thing we do, we're going to be using harnesses on the uh, on the bigger fish. This is uh, our own brand of harness, which has got little hinges to it, and it goes around the back of you, and it has carbon nylon snaps that goes around your middle. Very very light, non-absorbent material, rip-proof, tear-proof. You can wash them down, and then these two clip onto the reel lugs and you've got a lot of pressure there. However, from uh, the end of the D-rings here, we also manufacture a unique thigh pad. Now, if a lot of you in the UK are used to go wreck fishing, you use a small butt pad which is about this size. Now, you can't do that with stand-up fishing because you want to spread your legs and put a lot more pressure on the fish. So we made this one 15 inches wide with a flange on the end so that just rides on the top of your thighs. It doesn't fit up over your over your navel where we tend to fish normally in England it goes down very low on top of the thighs it's got a stainless steel pin and the rod gimbal slots in there and you can adjust it on these same straps of carbon nylon clips just to clip on the end of the D-wing so the whole outfit fits like that. Very very comfortable and certainly you can put a lot of fish, uh, a lot of pressure on a fish when you when you start to get bigger bigger species around the 100 pounds and up over 100 pound mark managed to get hold of a couple of dead fish because we're not going to show you on live fish and live fish over here they charge you two dollars a piece for so we just show you the two species of fish we're going to be using for live bait they're all bought uh, locally I would say if you come fishing uh, for the striped marlin go out with at least two um, that's one species this is called the cavalito which is a sort of big eyed scad um, it's just got spikes on the back there it's, Cavalito means little horse in Mexican. It's very, very strong. It's swimming away all the time. And the other one is very similar to our own mackerel. It's just, I think, called Spanish mackerel. It's got little dots, which you probably won't see on the video. So that's the two to get. Um, they're two dollars a piece, so you, you've got to look after them in the live world. Don't take too many. I would suggest about tens ample. Sometimes a crew can feather up more while you're there, but go with fresh bait. There's three different ways they hook these. If you're just sight casting to the marlin, in as much as they see the birds and a school of marlin feeding on baitfish on the surface. They'll race a boat up at about 25-30 knots, kill the engines and cast as fast as they can. A live fish on free line gear, just with, with no lead, nothing, straight into the school. 
Uh, that's the best way of fishing here, and it's a very refined technique that they've uh, got here in Cabo St. Lucas. The other way, if the fish are there but they're very deep, down off the Jamie Bank, the Golden Gate Bank, or the Gardona Canyon off the lighthouse, if they're down deep on the reef there, you're going to have to clip a lead to it. Now, uh, the best way to clip the lead on is with an elastic band. So you're going to have uh, your main line up to the swivel here, you can snap your link on like that, don't just put the lead in here, put an elastic band on and then half hitch um, your lead down here or use a piece of copper wire so that when the fish whips it about shaking, the lead flies off and the lead doesn't wear through the nylon, that's most important, that it can actually, while you're fighting a fish, wear through that piece of nylon there. I'll just show you briefly how they hook them on. You don't go through the... The standard way in England would be going through the bottom, through the top drawn out, just like this. Now they don't do that, they go through the nasal flap. In one side of the nasal flap, really easy, and it just hangs free like that. This is why it's a wide gape hook. So there's plenty of space there. Uh, it doesn't restrict the hooking power or anything, and it's got a wide gape so that uh, if a marlin takes that and it folds back, it doesn't go into the bait. So that's your best way, and the fish will live all day like that. More so with the mackerel, they'll hook it, if you're going to fish it deep, just above the root of the tail there. And that'll make it struggle down all the time pulling against you like this. Okay, so that won't be any good for casting at all because it's soft meat there. It'll do this, it'll just, it'll just tear free. So when you're casting to a fish, use the nasal flaps. Same with the mackerel. Just clip it through that easy. He's free to swim, swim about, and, and don't forget you've got that loop knot there as well, so it's completely hinged free, it won't tangle, it won't come back on itself. It shouldn't come back in and mask the, the hook itself. Finally, again for deep dropping or a fish that's on the surface close to you, they seem to like putting it just through the back of the dorsal like that. Now, as soon as you put the hook through the back end, it doesn't live so long. I like going through the nasal flaps, it lives all day and you can take it off, put it back in the live well, in between runs up to the marlin. But that's the three basic ways, in the back like that, in the tail, just above the tail there, if you're going to deep drop with some lead because the marlin are deep, or if they're on the surface, straight through that nasal flap, just slide it through and you can see the wide gate hook there, plenty of space, very very sharp, and not a long shank hook, so you're keeping everything small and the marlin doesn't see it, hopefully you get, uh, get a hook up. So that's basically all we're going to be using. Probably most of the fish we'll catch is going to be on live bait, but we might get a bonus one on the lure. So now we're just going to get a few hours sleep, start again in the morning and take you out fishing. Round, so it could you know, be a reason the crew like hooking them like this. They really wiggle. I put a weight on with a rubber band there. Uh, the elastic band might be a bit better than putting the weight in here. What I'm going to do is the other lads were getting their marlin yesterday at about 70 feet. So just as a tip, a yard is from your nose to the end of your hand like this. So if you can count down, you can you can put your bait three, six, nine, twelve, so on, and you can fish it at the depth you want then. You don't want to let it down too fast because you can spin up around the main line, and we've all had to happen. We've got a marlin hooked up, and it broke the double line, and that's where the lead had wrapped around the double line. Runs, let him run. And run they certainly can. These striped marlin, they probably average 100 pounds a piece and they will definitely stretch a string. And just look at the jumps on this fish pounding out of the ocean. The striped marlin is without a doubt the most acrobatic of all the marlin species. You have the Pacific and Atlantic blue marlin, you've got the black marlin, you've got the white marlin, but it is the striped marlin, this fish, that is the world's most spectacular and is therefore ideally targeted with light tackle. A light tackle, you can go down to 20 pound test if you want, but I consider light tackle still to be, you know, 40, 50 pound line, uh, a 30 to 50 pound uh, rod. 
fantastic action. You use a harness, what's called a kidney harness, on your back that helps support and uh, take the strain off your forearms and a thigh pad. So the whole outfit, the rod and reel, is actually being worked from a much lower position than the normal butt pad position. And it enables you to put a lot of pressure on a fish without tiring yourself down. And of course, the boat does back on the fish. They're trying to get that line back on the reel as fast as they can to give you a better scrap closer to the boat where there's no perhaps, perhaps no stretch in the line. But marlin fishing, all marlin fishing is teamwork. That's what it boils down to. You might think you caught the fish, but really it's the boat that catches the fish and the angler just stores that fishing line. The marlin is built very, very rough on the outside. They use it to stun their prey, so you need a glove to get a grip on them. And once you release them, they turn up the right way, just takes them a second or two to recover, and off they go back down into the deep blue Pacific water. Handshakes all around, congratulations. And you know what you do then? That's right, guys, straight back out. Trolling lures, next day's fishing, whatever you want, you've got to get out there and keep fishing, putting those days in. Some days you catch, some days you don't. It's the same as any fishing anywhere in the world. And here the crewman's baiting up, out at dawn, early in the morning, and some of the guys are uh, commercial fishing and pick up some of these fish near the bottom. And these little small open pangas with the guys waving are the mackerel fishermen. They're the guys that supply and sell you the bait in the morning, because they go out and fish all night for these mackerel, and then sell you the bait first thing in the morning and occasionally they will get a marlin grab hold of their mackerel as they put them in the buckets and bring them in live and that has got to be some kind of fishing fun hasn't it? 120 pound, 130 pound marlin on a hand line. It has happened and I guess over the centuries there's been some huge fish caught doing that. If you go out first thing in the morning you can actually catch a mackerel yourself but what a risk it is to take. You really want to be out there first thing, first thing at dawn to catch a few mackerel and if you can't always buy some and you get action like this. Jumping, jumping, jumping. Almost jumping into the other boat. Panga, look, he's gone past the other mackerel fisherman's panga. And there's 11 jumps on this one fish. The birds are what, you know, give the marlin away. They're high up in the sky. They're actually looking for the bait fish down below under the water. And as a general rule, the higher they are up in the sky, the deeper the bait fish are, and the lower they are, the shallower the bait fish are. So you want the birds down near the surface and look at the action on this fish. almost jumping into the other boat. And of course, these fish are pack fish. The striped marlin, when they move down from Magdalena Bay, they're coming down, heading south in the winter. And can't blame, they're going to warmer waters. And they're generally pouring past uh, Cabo St. Lucas on the tip of the Baja Peninsula. And you get great weather there, and you get some great fishing as well. I mean, they have good years, they have bad years. But trust me, fishing at Cabo St. Lucas on a bad year is still pretty good, even if you just go for the weather and some tuna. Fish on Andrea, we think they got that one. I put down a remember while we were trying to catch bait, we hooked one and lost it, popped the line. We just got another one hooked up here on a free line bait. We managed to clear all the other boats. With a bit of luck we might get this one and be able to get a tag in it. What is it? He might be towel wrapped this one. That's the way the bite's going. Thank you. 
Your battery's gone flat. Have this one. Brian, your battery's gone flat. Like. The reason you have to keep the rod low like that is otherwise the fish goes up underneath the boat and you get cut off by the boat's propeller. So I had to dive the rod tip under the water. Don't be afraid to do that and then clear the line around the props and then you can fight the fish and the crewmate can get hold of the leader leader the fish up carefully he's using a the glove there grabbing the bill just grabs a bill and they can get the hook out and there's another fish i don't know 120 140 pounds it's ready for the release when you get it up you can either get a quick still picture and just let it go release it just writes itself and away it goes and you can see in the background just how close to shore you can catch these striped marlin. You can hook them up not even a mile off the shore. So it's very, very comfortable fishing. You know, when the fish are biting close in, there's no need to run offshore. There's several banks that you can fish from uh, close to the lighthouse. And years and years ago, they used to catch them like half a mile outside the lighthouse. But as the fishing's got harder over the years, obviously, you know, they have to go further and further. But one of the traditional spots is fished up by the lighthouse. And it's very very good not so much for lure fishing they will come up if the winds bring the uh, bringing the fish down they come down tailing or surfing down the waves you can pick them up on lures but you know i find it's one of the better spots for either surface casting with a live bait if you can if you can if you've got the fish on the top and the marlin a ball in the bait up or if not just put a, a lead sinker on drop the bait down deep and do you know what you've got every chance of catching a marlin there small boat big boat open panga it doesn't really matter your bait is equal to everybody else's and then you get these fish stripping the line out non-stop full drag you can see he's set on there when i say that so i think 40 or 50 pound uh, pink andy which is my favorite fishing line is so strong it's unbelievable you can have it year after year the poor old mackerel live bait swimming around wondering whose fate is going to be next who's going to be consigned to this ocean of predators and there you can see that nice bend on these cow star stand up sticks the first three rod tip uh, rod rings you know you can see is a, is a nice sort of tippy action and then it starts to load up considerably and obviously we use uh, what they call um, a thigh pad and a back harness there it's not a full back harness it's actually a kidney harness comes around the back of your kidneys and that allows you to put a lot of pressure on a fish without wearing your forearms out now you can catch without a harness no question i've done it it's not, you know it's not a big problem but you're just wearing yourself out there's no medals for it and the object of the exercise is to get that fish in as fast as you can without busting it off uh, get it up tag it release it get it back alive and pete just burnt his finger on the forward the crewman are so impressed with the fish he's starting to wash the boat down so when they do that you know you've got a big fish on the end and this one was another striped marlin you can get some very very good fish and just look at the colors again of these pectorals lit up this is when they're in excitement mode the two pectorals they get that beautiful what they call lit up there before they attack baits and lures they do that powerful fish what a, what an animal what a creature This one, the crewman was leading the marlin up and I actually filmed with my right hand and using my tag stick with the left hand. I'm trying to tag the marlin with my left hand as well. And yeah, I've done a lot of tagging. We get that one in. There's the tag in the back of the fish. You just see the cylinder of the tag there. Get it up, holds it by the bill, wiggles the hook out. Geez, these small, these small hooks are you know quite easy to get it out. And I just crush them down, the barbs, handshakes all around. And it's even time for me to get on another fish. But, yeah, that's that's got that dig, dig, dig of a different species. A marlin, this one is not. A great scrappy, you get various species of tuna over there. Um, they get yellowfins and um, 
one of the one of the record fish it could get there is called the black skipjack. Now this is a black skipjack, and I've called them on 12 pound test about 12, 14 pounds, and didn't realise they were over the world record at the time. So you can get a lot of fish there, uh, different species, and a lot of world record fish. And just watch this one taking off over the crewman's head. We put him up on the bow of the boat with a third rod. We thought we might get lucky, and uh, he did indeed. We were fishing at the back, and it's smiles all around as yet another mile is hooked up. So somebody might say, oh yeah, but the crewman had the rod up the front. You know, we don't care, we're not interested. We're not fishing for world record fish. We're just going for days fishing, as do most guys. And obviously they're tourist orientated, so they hook the fish, give it to the angler. I'm quite capable, as are a lot of anglers, of hooking their own fish. And um, if, does it matter? The world records in New Zealand are somewhere over 400 pounds. You're highly unlikely, if not totally improbable, of catching a, a world record strike mile off Cabo. So it doesn't really matter, you know, who hooks a rod. Just get that fish in. So there you have some totally awesome marlin fishing tips. Get yourself out there if you can. You can use your ordinary rod and reel and I'm sure you're going to have some heart pounding excitement. Cabo San Lucas, it's the place to be.